<laughs> Hello, Alexandra. Spilt my smoothie, so I cleaned up real quick. <laughs> oh, of course I did, right? I was pouring it, and all of a sudden it came out too fast, and I yanked it away, and sure enough, it went everywhere. All right, I'm going to start on real quick so I can watch myself. And I forget how to do all that already. Isn't that funny? I don't go on here enough to view your channel. All right, so let's paint a little landscape while we're here. I am keeping it vertical for now. It seems to be what they encourage on YouTube. So I'm going to try that for now. I don't know if it'll be my final, my final way to do things or not, but for now, I leave it that way. Okay. Hi, Danica. Hello. <clears throat> How are you? How's your Saturday? All right. Let's see. Checking up there. Say hi. Um, cause I can't see who's here. If you'd like, if you don't, you can go incognito as well. That's fine too. Either way, just if I don't say hi, like I do on Instagram, that is why, because it doesn't. Oh, nope. Just participants. Okay. So I saw where it says at who's in here, but it doesn't say, all right, well, anyway, let's get started. So I did cut up some more papers last night since I love this kind of two and a two and three quarters by five-ish size. And let's see. So you can get eight sheets, eight pieces of paper if you go just shy of four by six out of one, uh, what is it, quarter sheet? Or you can get Hello, Laura. Hi. I've been productive, so it's been good. Oh, good. I have not been as productive. I'm trying to be. I need to get that Skillshare class done. It's kind of looming over my head. But I did want to do a quick, not a quick, but I just wanted to do a live in between the chaos. So that I guess, basically, so I can convince other people that, you know, you have time to paint, even though you have a ton of other things to do. <laughs> you probably should be doing those other things. But I also want to kind of start, um, being more present on different platforms than just Instagram so that, you know, I'm just kind of not just dedicating everything I've got to Instagram. Uh, it's spreading myself a little more so I can experience other things and hopefully, um, you know, just, I guess, explore that. So I'm using my use tape and yes, it's kind of ugly, but <laughs> it works and that's what I like to use. So let's see, let's use this paper's pretty small. I really want that Trin Toretto Magneto, Magneto size zero or two zero, but I still have the size two and it's pretty big for this paper. So I guess I could use a Tintoretto or something, another Tintoretto or just another mop. I could use my Polina mop. That's what I used last night uh, to get some of, the, some of it on. And then I used a finer one for more details. And so I suppose that's what we'll do again. I've got my liners over nearby. I have been really liking Christy Rice's uh, dagger. If you're in the market for another dagger, my, my original dagger that I love and have loved over the years are those floppy ones. And I've never had a firm one. And so I love this quarter inch dagger. And I have actually been using it a lot. It's nice to turn on its side, right? And use it as almost not like a flat, but sort of similar to add just textures to the landscapes and the ground. So I'll try that for you, show you what that does. And um, I'm trying to think of another brush I can just use that's a little bit smaller, maybe just a round. I'll have a round handy too. Okay, mop, round, dagger, liner, and that's about it. <laughs> of course, you can just paint with a round or a mop. You don't have to have all the brushes. I am bringing out my not out because it sits here on my desk all the time, but I have my uh, beautiful swirls. What's it called? Beautiful swirls, right? Kira, beautiful swirls? Yeah. I just call it bubble, my ice bubble palette. So I've been calling that. I'm going to wet my paper today. I, I'm about half and half with wetting paper. You also know that I work very small. So for me, wetting paper, I feel like it doesn't really truly matter as much because by the time I get the paint on it, the paper is essentially wet, right? Maybe not as wet and I don't work a super long time. So I feel like that also isn't a, uh, such a big concern. Let's clean off my board. It's got a lot of shimmer, Laura. <laughs> I, was, I was splattering like a crazy person last night. 
I was splattering tons and tons of color. I was having fun with it. All right, so let me, let me make sure. Yeah, <laughs> it was everywhere. <laughs> I kind of like leaving it sometimes. Sometimes it's really pretty. I was, you know what I was using? I was using uh, Sunset Glow. I really love this color. This is a good color. It's kind of a goldy, rosy color, rose gold, no, yeah, kind of ish. And it just adds really pretty color shimmers. Let me show you. The, sh the shimmers are like, kind of have a little bit more color than just a regular, regular gold. And I don't know, I just was really loving the way they looked on there. Kind of a hint of a copper, kind of a hint of a gold, and kind of a hint of rose all together. I don't know if that's the proper definition or description, but I was having a lot of fun with those. So that's what I've been using. Uh, sometimes I will get stuck on one, one color like that and just keep going with it. <laughs> so, and sometimes I won't. I've been doing a lot of pink skies lately. So let's grab some, let's grab some yellow. I like, been liking, been liking, <laughs> I've been enjoying starting my pieces with a bit of yellow in the horizon line and just kind of playing from there. I'm not making a line and I just got a fuzz on there. So just kind of let's switch. Let's see if I can do it with a round. It's been a while since I've painted strictly with a round. I prefer mops. I don't, I don't know if you know this about me, but I prefer them. Amber, stop trying to make me put in a motor. <laughs> just add it to your cart, Danica, for one day. I have a ton under favorites. Hi from Finland, I just recently started painting. Oh, yay, a lot of that's awesome. I love the beginning phase of painting. I tend to call myself the forever beginner because I think it's such a, an amazing place to be. And I think it just keeps you curious and keeps you exploring and excited and trying new things and new products. And it's just such a fun place to be. Not knowing your style and just exploring all the styles and ex you know, just there's just so much to, to do and see and be a part of and I don't know it makes me really happy so I'm glad you're here thank you thank you thank you thank you so got some yellow down and I'm going darker than you know maybe I would because my stuff's been drying late lately and I and I kind of been underestimating myself and not adding a lot so I don't know we'll see it, it this is intuitive I don't have a anything in my mind I'm just kind of saying what sounds fun and what looks like it might be fun and going from there and I'm gonna try I got my paper pretty wet so that it would stay wet for a while in case I wanted to drop in more colors and and see does anybody have an opinion on what color sky they'd like to see I could go pink to purple we can go just more oranges and reds we can go hmm hmm sorry big gulp of that smoothie hmm we can go blues. Let's see. Um, we can put in some foreground. I've been leaning towards grass lately. I think I was burned out from a little ocean. So let's go there. For now, I am mixing Laura's and Masha's greens together right now. So I'm not sure uh, how people feel about that. I, I'm fine with that. I, I like to mix colors. And if you don't know, I do use Masha and Laura's handmade paints probably the most often. I have a few other makers I really like as well, but I have the most of theirs. And so they uh, are the ones I do gravitate towards and I love. Hello, hello, hello. Hi Hudson, nice to have you here. Uh, just some loose intuitive watercolor painting, clay time exploration, uh, not a lot of pressure, no, no, no pressure actually. Well, there's pressure for me because, you know, <laughs> painting in front of people and putting myself out there is always a bit of pressure that's, uh, you know, fun, but not, not, sometimes not so fun. I mean, it's not not fun. It's, you know, scary at times. <laughs> anyway. Oh, so handmade paints. I have been using exclusively for a while now. I do touch, I know, I guess I can't say exclusively because I do grab, I do grab, uh, some of my commercial paints. I just finally made a chart of all my commercial paints that sit to my right. Yeah, this is <laughs> just a little chart. So these all sit over here to my right in palettes that I haven't really been using. These are Daniel Smith, Windsor & Newton, and they are hodgepodge. They are everywhere. They're by brand, so that's why you'll see them in different colors. But anyway, those sit over there, and you need to organize those and get those better so that 
you know, when we go to Dominican Republic, I would like to pack up my handmade so that I can take them and maybe just paint with those commercial brands for a few days before we go so that my paints are nice and dry. Anyway, I do like to grab some darks here and put them in the corners. Let's check to see if my sky's getting, you can always do a check and if it's starting to get dry, which it's starting to a little bit, you can always just take a sprayer, you can spray a little bit. You can take your flat brush and just make sure that you're keeping that area wet. The area we're working in is going to stay wet, but this other area down here, you kind of want to make sure that you're not letting it dry. Otherwise you want to dry the whole piece and, you know, re-wet from there. So what we're going to do is just make sure we're getting some light down in this foreground. Nothing's permanent. So if you do something, you're like, mm, don't like that. Uh, you got a question. Okay. Ask away. As long as it's, <laughs> as long as it's nice. <laughs> no, just kidding. It doesn't, it just has to be polite. <laughs> you're prefacing it. So it's scaring me. <laughs> Hope it's not weird. <laughs> no, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, I knew it. How do I have that feeling? I have that feeling. I have that feeling. Ay, ay, ay. All right. So we are letting this. So what you can also do is tilt your board this way a little bit so that you can get some water and some suggestions of some trees and shrubberies going up here. And that will give you sort of a feel without having to do that. And this is kind of a little bit of a preview of what my next Skillshare class will be dabbling in. Let's try this dagger. Actually, you know what? Let's get the sky in first and then we'll play with that foreground a little bit more. Alrighty, let's do some sky. Let's go with, nobody suggested a sky color. So I'm going to look at uh, some blues here. Let's, we're looking at Laura's and Masha's blues. And I'm thinking, 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 thinking. I'm trying to stay away from my pinks and stuff. So, um, not trying to stay away. I just felt like I've been doing a lot of pink skies lately. So let's, let's try, ooh, you know what? Nope. Oh, I don't even know what color that is. Let's go with, um, let's go with a little bit of coral first and then I'll decide where to go from there. Only because, oh, got a little green in there. That's okay. I'm gonna a little more subtle on this one, I guess. We'll, bleed. we'll get that in there a little bit. Let's go this way. So again, with the corner, so you get a little vignette, vignette going here and kind of pulling that color in towards the middle. And then you can decide what to do after that point. So we can bring in maybe a little bit more orange, diluted orange, bring it up in the sky. I'm not really sure. I'm just playing. So I end up sometimes with these, with these thing, with these um, colors kind of going too much of a line, too much of a separation. So that's why I'm trying to bring in the orange, the orange back in with the coral so that we can kind of pull it down in. And you can use, now use those three colors as your, also your accent uh, cloud colors or formations of clouds or suggestions of clouds or whatever you want them to be. Okay, so I need a Laura yellow. Oh, Danica, you don't have a yellow from Laura? I really like her butternut um, is one of them. That's kind of the ochre. And then I think I feel Buzzy Bee's a little bit warmer or solstice. I do like Buzzy. I do. I do, Danica. I do like Buzzy Bee. Hello, Chris. Hi. Hello, hello. Um, so I'm just adding some of uh, Laura's coral. One of my favorite colors. Actually, let me make sure it's coral. Is it? Is it called salmon though, Laura? <laughs> let me check. Let me grab my palette knife so I can, oh, you know what? I took my palette knife out. I think, oh, nope, it's right here. I thought I stuck it in with my travel stuff because last time it was super handy to have a palette knife on our trip. All right, let's see. This is, is stuck next to uh, lava lizard, so it's really sticky. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, it is plant and coral. It was coral and Aubrey I was mixing together a little bit of. Okay. Um, solstice is available too. 
So Solstice is slightly cooler than Buzzy Bee, I feel. Laura can be able to help too, and she can tell me if I'm right or wrong. But that's what my swatch looks like. Buzzy Bee is a warmer, brighter, almost like, not dandelion, but kind of dandelion, and Solstice is slightly more lemon, if that helps. Hello, Virginia. Hi. Hello. Welcome. I have to leave because it's getting pretty late, but I'll subscribe and I'll be back. Oh, good. And this will be saved, Lana. So you can come back and you can pick up where you watched. It'll be, where'd you leave off? Like 10 minutes in or so. And you could speed up right to where you were. Um, let's see. Laura says, no, that's Essie adding stuff to my inventory. Solstice is out of stock. Oh, bummer. Okay. I love Buzzy Bee. I got it in my last order. It's a good one, right, Virginia? And you could tone it down. Um, also, if you wanted a lighter yellow, Danica, there's Buttercup. Is Buttercup in stock? Okay, before this dries and I quit talking so much. Okay, so I do like to turn mine on the side so I can see what's going on. And it's not dry, so we're good. We can keep going. But again, no big deal if it dries. It's kind of fun sometimes to actually let it dry. It gives you a chance to stop. Stop that layer, right? Almost put a pause and freeze that layer so that you can go back, re-wet everything, and then put a new layer in there, which, you know, Colby does a lot of it. And so I, I fought, I fought layers for so long, but really they, I get why she does them and loves them so much. And I'm always looking for good yellow and a good orange. Oh, and red. Yeah, red is hard. Uh, I've learned over the last year that mixing a red, Virginia, can, it can mold, it can mold that sucker for up to like six hours. That's not like, they can mold a red for up to six hours. And that's a long time to be sitting there molding, right? Uh, let's see, Virginia says it's a nice yellow, not too bright. Sharon recommended it to me. Yeah, it's a great yellow. I, it, I think it is pretty bright, in my opinion. It's, it's a bright yellow, but not bright <coughs> in the way of like jarring lemon yellow. It's really a warm, bright yellow for me. I'm so used to ochre, though. Ochre's my go-to yellow. Um, no, not yet. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? I'm always looking for a good... Okay, got that. Uh... Yes, the reds take forever. And I felt bad. <laughs> no wonder reds are so hard. <laughs> and no wonder some people just don't make very many of them. I was like, okay, this makes more sense now. Because that's a lot of work. I can't even imagine mulling something for an hour, let alone six of them. That is a really long time. I I'm super impressed that y'all go to that length for us. So, um, yeah. <sighs> oh, 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 oh. Let's see. It's still I'm still a little um, getting used to YouTube's format versus Instagram. It is a little bit different, and it's not bad. I, I like it so far, but it is different. So getting used to the way it's set up, you know, can be um, just you know change. You're used to something a certain way so for so long, and all of a sudden you try to change it. You're like, wait, what am I doing? Why? Huh? So I'm just going to this. So I left, I must have left water on my tape right here because you can see this crazy thing going on down here. And that's okay. It's just all just practice for me. So I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, torn up about it or anything. But if you are doing something, you do want to watch your edges. And when you're, especially when you're using a lot of water like I do, you want to be careful with those edges and not do what I did. Be a little more mindful. All right, let's find a smaller brush. Let's go with, you know what I haven't been using lately? My Artify brushes, and I do really appreciate them. So let's use a smaller Artify brush. Or we can use a, we can actually use what I really, mm, we'll just use an Artify brush. I have already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight brushes. <laughs> there are days when I bring out all the brushes because something either isn't feeling right or I'm experimenting or, you know, making trees or something, something's just not working. And yeah, don't like, sometimes just brushes just don't work. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, a, if it's a, just a, I don't know, mindset, what it is, but sometimes they just don't. And, you know, I have to pick up other brushes and try other things. So that's what makes it difficult for me to try to pack for a Dominican Republic. So I don't know what I'm going to like that week. And I really hope that <clears throat> excuse me, that I bring everything that I like. I am an overpacker. I like to have everything I possibly could want. Uh, let's see. I use Laura's paints every single day. I would sleep with the tin. 
I use them too, Virginia. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Laura has the best greens and black, she does. Oh, pink. Yes, it's, oh wait, I miss them. Where'd you guys go? Uh, is wild pink the name? Love pinks. Yes. It's, um, yes, what Laura said. It's a very bright pink. It is. I can swatch it if you need to see it. Uh, let's see, I missed, I'm sorry. Uh, I bought two pieces of plexiglass with the rounded edges. Oh good, pre reclamation is so much better than taping. I know, Chris, right? It's like the best thing ever. And I think these things are like, what is it, anywhere from 10 to $12, so $6 a piece. And this one is just so much nicer than the gamble of trying to decide which one's thick enough on, uh, I mean, I guess I don't know if you did the same thing. I don't know if you bought the same ones as I did, but these ones are just really, really solid and I was just really happy with them. I tried using a Da Vinci to create brush yesterday. I hated it. <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny, Virginia? Some days you'll just be like, oh my gosh, this brush is everything. And the next day you'll be like, oh, I can't even paint what I'm so used to painting with this. It's weird how things can do that. Okay, so yes, I did wait. So now everything's dry. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry it and evaluate and think what I think what I for sure. Yes, I bought this. Oh, good. Uh, I, these never, I've used these for six years almost now, Chris, and they never work, they never bend, they never, they just, they never stain, they don't buckle, it's still perfectly flat. It's the best thing, it's great size for me because I don't paint larger than this, and if I did, they actually do make a size that's bigger than this. Uh, what size is that Flexi? It is, it is in my Amazon in Virginia, and might be hard to see. If it's hard to see, let me know and I'll send you the link. Uh, it should be right in there though, and I think I updated it recently, so it should be more at the top of the, top of the list. I believe that Amazon stores, I think they go by when you add the product, which is kind of a bummer. And I do want to organize it better, but then it makes it harder for people to see everything and maybe just see what they maybe were missing. Oh, I need this. Cause you know, I wasn't looking that looks smaller than my 12. Yes. This is way smaller. This is like five by seven. No, it's nine by it's six by nine. It's a really, really handy size. Virginia. I also take it traveling or if I'm going just, um, going to paint like anywhere outside of my house it, it's perfect and uh you know i just tilt it with everything and i don't know it, they come really clear when you first get them so you can't have the reflective issue and if that bothers you you could scuff it up if you're actually wanting to film and it bothers you but mine's mine's been through the ringer so it doesn't have that issue let me mute you all so i'm not blaring my heat tool on you That's a good point too. They are super easy to clean. All the paint, paint splatters that I get on here, all the silver, the, or the silver, the gold splatters uh, come right off. I do all my embossing with these things when I'm holding the heat tool, the heat gun. I just hold on to my little paper like that and just heat it up. It's just everywhere. It's amazing. Hello, Naomi. Hi, welcome. Welcome, welcome. I am just about three quarters away finishing this loose landscape. I have no reference, so I'm just kind of painting what I feel. And let me show you. When I was drawing, I was thinking, wow, that's, wow, it's kind of, it's kind of, it reminds me of a rustic photograph, like an old print that maybe like started like doing weird funky things at the edges. And I don't hate that. <laughs> so I am actually going to leave it. I'm not going to try to fix it. I'm going to leave it. Gold splatters all over the keyboard and laptop. Even my glasses, that doesn't happen. I know, I have white Dr. P.H. Martins all over my, my palettes as well. And uh, it's everywhere. Between the gold splatters, the other splatters, it's just everywhere. So if you touch your paper after the, using the heat tool or letting it dry naturally with the air, whatever, uh, excuse me, hiccup, it should feel normal temperature. 
Over here, it feels a little bit cool. So that means it's not completely dry in that spot. And you wanna be careful about how much water you're introducing. Ideally, you want it dry all the way. But I'm going to just, I'm gonna work on this side and then we'll work our way over there. I'm going to add just a few, and I can see some messes in there. But again, I'm not out for perfection. So if, if perfection is your thing, that's fine. It just, I, I'm not one of those people. And I just, just, I don't know why it doesn't appeal to me. It's funny though, because I will take apart something I knit five, seven, eight, nine times until I get it perfectly right. But with watercolor, I don't do that. With baking, I will bake and bake and bake until I get it perfect. It's so funny, but with watercolor, it's the one thing that I let go of control of. It's the weirdest thing to me. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. I'm just going to stick a little tree right here. And yes, I add trees almost to everything. That is kind of my, I guess, signature thing, if you will. I live in the Pacific Northwest, for those of you that don't know. And I moved here because of trees. <laughs> I lived in the desert 14 years before that. And I knew wherever I was taking my family next that it had to have trees everywhere. So outside of every single windows of my house, I can see trees. And I'm happy like that. I don't even need to be outside in them as much. I just need to be able to see the green and know it's there. And yeah, basically to look outside and see it. It makes me very happy. So if you think I obsessively paint trees, this is true. I do. I 100% do. And I'll probably just keep painting them over and over and over in skies and landscapes over and over and over. And you know, with watercolor, you never get the same thing twice. So for me, that's pretty crazy and pretty amazing at the same time and I am a chatter so if you ever want to mute me if you just want to watch I am perfectly okay with that that's absolutely okay you can also slow down on YouTube I'm not entirely sure how but I know that people have told me there is a slowdown I think Atlanta may still be considered a natural forest but we've had a lot of building all oh, in the last decade, decade or so oh thank you thank you thank you I appreciate that that's amazing artwork. And, I, and I've just practiced over and over and over. So it's not talent or skill or anything like that. It's just something that, you know, if you put in enough uh, time and practice, you can do it as with any craft or, you know, craft or art. Now drawing, I feel a little harder. <laughs> I'm not a drawer. I cannot draw worth crud. And so that one, I think takes a lot more dedication drawing. So I, I'm always in super in awe of people that can draw and uh, a little bit of envy sometimes too because I just find it so fascinating that they can see things and draw it and know how to do that and it comes out the way it's supposed to and you know all those lights and shadows come naturally to them and it just doesn't to me and that's okay it, you know it is what it is and we all work with what we have or what we're able to do and so I think that's part of the really appeal to watercolor is that it's just it kind of doesn't let you follow an exact recipe or pattern, right? With with pretty much everything else, there's, well, all my other crafts, you know, all the fabric ones or, text, or textile ones, there's, there's recipes and patterns to follow. And this is something there's no pattern to. I just have to keep trying, you know, tutorial after tutorial. Those are definitely helpful. All right, I am just going back and blurring the bottoms of my trees just a little bit so they don't look just sitting on top. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't, and that's okay too. And I'm taking a really dark mixture of green and a liner and contemplating adding a little bit of texture. And those are just really wonky. Whoa, almost dropped my brush. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> oh my gosh, trying to fiddle it around. So... If you paint, you know that people will often kind of twirl the brush around because you're trying to get the best angle of the bristles, like how they sit. Sometimes they sit differently, right? And so, <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sandra. That's very kind of you. I so wish I could get that diffused light that you do. Um, Virginia, the in the middle, you mean? That whole, it, 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 you can get it. You can get it. Just practice, just a lot of practice, um, a lot of water, right? And you saw how I work from my edges in. Do you remember how I did that? I worked from my edges in. So you're not necessarily putting as much paint right in the middle. Uh, and so that helps kind of force you to not go heavy handed in the middle, I feel. 
At least it does me. Oh, thank you. I don't feel like it's talent. I just feel like it's a lot, a lot of practice. I was just saying that. I just feel like it's, it's just, it's just time daily. I, I practice daily and I have been practicing since 2020 uh, daily. And I started in 2018 and I just wasn't getting, you know, good enough or better. Uh, and that was mostly because I had the wrong supplies. I didn't have the right paper. I was using cheap, inexpensive paper and it was cellulose paper versus 100% cotton. So it was basically made from wood pulp and stuff versus good stuff by cotton. And once I did that, it was a game changer. And the daily practice and the tutorials and just, you know, doing things over and over and over and over and over until, you know, I'm sure sick, people were sick of seeing it, but it was, it was therapeutic as well. Yes, and down into the middle of the painting. No, I was not here in the beginning, but I know what you mean. Soups from the out to the middle. Correct, Virginia. Yes, focus on that um, and let your paint, you know, run off the brush. Don't pick up more when you're working in the middle. Uh, and you can even rinse your brush off a little bit. You just want to be careful about not adding too much water. But if you're working with enough, that much water, it'll kind of happen naturally. You don't think you have to worry about it as much, in my opinion. And with practice, of course, but you already know that. <laughs> All right, let's do some splatters. Splatters and some birds. And we'll use that that um, one that I was talking about, the Sunset Glow from Laura, instead of just a straight up gold or, you know, my favorite, Rasulka. I should do a swatch, a side-by-side -side of Sunset Glow and Rasulka so you all can see. I don't care if it's cracked, it's still beautiful. And then, I'm a small sketcher artist and love it. Oh, that's awesome. See, I was just saying, I'm so envious of people that can draw. See, <laughs> I wish I could do the drawing part. I am so envious. Now that skill and talent drawing. Um, I know it can be learned because I did, I did take drawing classes and I did learn a little bit when I was in there, but it, it was really, I struggled. I really struggled, like really, really struggled. Those shapes and perspective with like, just they don't come naturally. It, ah. Uh, uh, maybe I just need a good teacher. I don't know. I love Sunset Glow. Mine is rapidly. I know mine. I know the good ones. The good handmade paints go so fast once you start using them. I wasn't using O Tree Bark of, of Masha's. I was using the heck out of that one, and I was slowing down on Laura's Inky Bat or Inky no Little Bat because <laughs> I was using it like crazy, and I didn't want it to be gone. Isn't that funny? I'm like, no, we must save the paints. Don't use them. <laughs> Uh, my logic yeah all right so I feel like splatters in the darker areas really are fun because they they add more contrast they're popping more right so if you're just splattering in the lighter areas I feel like it doesn't do as much so I'm gonna make sure I get this little corner over here really well because it has some darker spots and I'm taking my round six and doing that hello 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 welcome and so I just want to get that corner. We can get this corner over here a little bit more up in that darker, funky area. The area that kind of got a little, what did I call it? Uh, Polaroid, Polaroid exposure or something. And yes, yeah, sometimes going slower and more steady with splatter is better than going hard and fast because you can get too many splatters and it just goes crazy. Love sprinkles, voice of my <laughs> granddaughter. <laughs> All right, let's check the sky, make sure it's dry, which we already dried it, so it should be. I'm gonna take my rigger and I'm going to mix a dark color with a lot of water so that I have a pretty uh, runny mixture. It's gonna run around the pan when I mix it up and make sure you don't drip water on your page and just do very, I'm gonna do very delicate little birdies, suggestions of birds. That one went a little bit heavy, but that's okay. Oh, thanks, Virginia. All right, and this tape, oh yeah, it's, it's done. It's on its, I can show you how I get a little bit of that out, but they don't, it doesn't bother me. If you get on the edges, the reason why it doesn't bother me is technically, if you were to frame this, you would use a mat, right? So your mat would cover up all your edges and that wouldn't be a thing. But if it does bother you, what we can do is, what I do is I blot this out to make sure, and then I take my eraser I know, I don't, I don't mind it either, Virginia, at all. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Chris. But you can take this brush and you can wet it and don't introduce a bunch of water, but you can just kind of scrub at it a little bit, blot it, and you will get some, most of it out. And you can use, people use white over it. it. Again, it doesn't really bother me, so I just kind of leave it. 
If you're super picky, like it doesn't bother, that doesn't bother me either. I'm planning to paint a sunset for my grandma on her birthday. Her birthday is, aww, that's awesome. I love that. Um, if you find me, do, are you on Instagram too, Sandra? I'd love to see your work. So if you uh, send me a message, I can, I can, oh, thank you, Naomi. Uh, oh, this is so serene. Oh, good, good, good. I was hoping maybe a little serenity for our, our Saturday, our peaceful. So this edge was a little funky, but again, I don't mind how it kind of got weird and, you know, could have added a lot more in here, something for interest, but you know, sometimes it's okay to keep it simple and just kind of keep it, keep it, you know, simple. And not to mention, you can just do it later. Amber, thanks for spending some your Saturday with us. Love your art and you all. Thank you, Virginia. I super appreciate it. And you know that. I really, really do. Appreciate all of you for being here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your uh, Saturday. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments or feel free to also message me on Instagram. That's kind of my main hub, if you will, but I'm trying to branch out into, Inst into YouTube a little bit more. So I should be in both places. So thanks again for joining and I will see you next time. Bye.